In this video, we're going to see how do we find the five number summary as well as how do we find z-scores. So starting off, we need to know what is the five number summary. And what the five number summary tells us is it tells us the minimum of a data set, what we call Q1 or the first quartile, the median, which you can also call the median Q2, um, Q3, which is the third quartile, and the maximum. And so it splits any data set up into these five very important numbers, and each one designates where a quarter of the data is. So at the minimum, you've got 0% of the data at or below that point. At Q1, you have 25%, or one quarter of the data at or below that point. The median, as you know, that's the halfway point, so you've got 50%, or two quarters of the data at or below it. Q3 is where we have three quarters, or about 75% of the data, at or below that point. And then the maximum, which is sometimes called Q4, is where we have four out of four quarters, or 100% of the data, at or below that point, which makes sense since the maximum is the biggest. Of course, 100% of the data is below it. There's a couple different ways we can find the five number summary. Um, starting off, I would probably order your data from smallest to largest. So I'm going to sort my data in Excel. And so we can see right away that the minimum is six and the maximum is 104. So what we can then do is find the median of our data using the same median function that we learned a couple sections back to see that the median is 18. And I think, let's see, this data has, it has 15 points. It's got an odd number. So one of these 18s is smack dab in the middle. I think it's this one. I'm just going to highlight to show it's the median. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven below it, and then seven above it. So that is our median. And then to find Q1, we can find the median of the bottom half, which is 10. And then to find Q3, we can find the median of the top half, which is 31. So we could say, all right, 10 is my Q1, and then 31 is my Q3. So we've got a quarter of the data from the minimum to Q1, and then we've got a quarter of the data up to Q2, which is the median, and then another quarter up to Q3, and then another quarter up to Q4, which is the max. So that's splitting the data set up into our five number summary. And what's important is that we can do the five number summary with any set of data. When we talked about the empirical rule, it had to be bell-shaped. But five number summary works for everything, which is nice. There is another way we can find the five number summary using Excel. And so I'm going to show you this as well. And I honestly do not care which way y'all do it. The way I demoed it initially, that's the way your book does it. And then this way I'm going to show you in Excel. I honestly think it's a little bit quicker, but it's a little bit different from the way the book does it, so um, you can do it either way. I will accept both answers as completely correct on a test. For your my stat lab homework, you've got to do it the book's way, which is what I did first, but on the test or in any mini project that you do for my class, I will grade them both completely correct because they are both correct ways to do it. All right, so to do it Excel shortcut way, I'm going to label the same things, minimum Q1, median Q3, and max. And then beside that, I'm going to label their quartile numbers. So I already said that the minimum is when you have 0% of the data at or below it. So you can call that Q0. And then Q1 is 1. The median can be Q2. Q3 is 3. And then the max is also known as Q4 because you've got 4 out of 4 quartiles below it. So that's going to be our 4. And then we're going to go into the cell beside the 0 and go up to our function wizard, change it to statistical. And I'm going to go down to quartile inc, so quartile.inc, and to do this one, for array, I'm going to highlight all my data, and then it's very important, but hit the F4 button on your keyboard to put the dollar signs around it. What it does is it locks in that data as your data. If you forget to hit F4 to lock in the data, you will get wrong answers and you will lose points, and that's probably the most forgotten step when students do it this way, is they forget to lock in their data. Because what we do next, where it says quart, is we go and we self-reference the zero cell. So it's going to go through the data and find the zero quartile. And then when we drag it down, it'll go through the data and find the first quartile, and then the second, and the third, and then the fourth. And so what you'll notice is that our minimum, our median, and our maximum are all the same, but our Q1 and Q3 are actually a little bit different. And the reason this is, is when we did it with your book, the books method, when we found Q1, we just found the median of the bottom half of the data. 
we excluded the median. And then when we found Q3, we found the median of the top half of the data. But what Excel does is when it finds Q1, it actually finds the median of the bottom half, including the median itself. So it includes the median to find Q1, and then when it finds Q3, it also includes the median there as well. And you may think, you know, that's different. That's two different ways of doing it. It gets you two different answers. Yes, it does. And I've looked at a bunch of different stats books, and half of them say the correct way is to do it like the book, and the other half say the correct way is to do it like Excel. So that's why I count both ways as correct. I cannot find a definitive answer as to which one is the best way. So I will take either one, and I'll have both answers on my answer keys. So you can either kind of do it by hand, the way the book does it, or you can use the quartile ink function in Excel so Excel does all the work for you, but you do get slightly different answers. Then the other thing we're going to talk about in this section are z-scores. And z-scores are really helpful because they tell you how far away from average is a data point. So in order to figure out how many standard deviations away from average a data point is, we need to know what is the average. So I need to find the mean of my data set by finding its average. And then I need to find my standard deviation. So finding my standard deviation of my data set. And so the way we find a z-score is we start with an equal sign and a parenthesis. Then the formula is x minus mu. Mu is our average. And I'm going to lock it in because that average it is the average. I'm going to hit F4 to put those dollar signs on there to lock it in. So that when I drag in a second, it doesn't change it because that is the average. I don't want it to change what it's referencing. So it's X minus mu divided by sigma, which is our standard deviation. And again, I'm going to hit F4 to lock it in. So I've got my formula. It's my cell or my, my data point X minus mu, which is the mean, hitting F4 to lock it in. And close parentheses divided by sigma which is my standard deviation, and again, I hit F4 to lock it in. That way, when I drag it down, it's not going to change the references for my mean and my standard deviation, because they were locked in. But you can see it does change the point value, or my X value. And this is really interesting. We see that our mean is 26 and a half or so. And so you can see the further we are away from 26, the more the um, smaller our standard deviation is. So down here, or the smaller our z-score is. So down here at 6, we see that we're negative 0.79 standard deviations below the average. And the closer we get to 26.5, the closer we get to 0. 0 would mean that we were at the average. So we're getting really close to 0 for our z-score when we get closer to the mean. And then once we pass it and we're above it, we become positive to show that we're above the mean. So the negative z-score says we're below average. A positive z-score says that we're above average. And then the bigger we get, the further away from average we are and the bigger our z-scores are. So this is a skewed data set. Look, we've got a bunch of little numbers and we have basically three outliers. And that 104 is an extreme outlier. Its z-score is over three standard deviations away from the mean. And if you think about like the empirical rule, the probability of being more than three standard deviations away is like 0.15% is a very small value. So it's very rare to have a data point that is that big away from the mean. So it shows you that 104 is an extreme outlier. It's way bigger compared to most of the data, which is below 20 or so. So we can see that we've got a couple points that are really big above average, and then most of our data points are a little bit below average, but not extremely below relatively.